Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study the small intestine. So continue from the stomach. The food and water from the mouth and don't you receive from the stomach. From the stomach, we keep going down from to the intestine. So first, see where is the small intestine. The small intestine is located in the abdomen. It's the upper end of the upper end connect with the stomach, and then the lower end connect with the large intestine. So that's the blue and green area. And the small intestine. The small intestine, the meridian connects with the heart. And then the function of the small intestine, receiving and digesting food. As you can see from the, the whole process of digest, digestion, the food received from the, from the food receives from the stomach. And then the stomach, the function of the stomach, receives the food and decompose the food. After the the food is decom decomposed. The food will be transported to the small intestine. This is with the under the with the function of the descending function of the stomach. So from the stomach, the function of the stomach we got receive and decompose and also descending. So the descending function from the stom of the stomach help to move the food and water move downwards to the small intestine. And then the small intestine can receive and digest the food. So the small intestine receive the food and water from the stomach and digest further and absorb the qi and body fluid from the food and water. So now you will be confused that what's the relationship between the spleen and small intestine? Because you see here we said receiving and digest digesting food. The spleen in charge of the transportation and transforma and transformation of food and water. So these are actually in Chinese medicine, the function of small intestine is covered under the function of the spleen, which means the spleen's function includes the small intestine the function. Actually in Chinese medicine theories, the spleen, the function of the spleen refers to the whole digestive includes can include more, but at least it includes the whole digestive function. That's why the, sm the function of the small intestine in terms of the digesting food is actually part of the function of the spleen. So here is re receiving and digesting food. These two pro process, process happens at the same time but these are two processes. So as a full organs, small intestine is hollowed inside. So as a hollowed organ, the food and the water can store in the small intestine. And then the food and water will stay in the small intestine for a certain periods. During this period, the small intestine with the Assistance from the spleen qi to digest the food and also absorb the qi, which the qi and blood which we can use as the nutrition. And then the following function follows by this digestion is separating the clear from the turbot. What does it mean by the clear and turbot? 
actually in the other words that is actually separating the the qi as the nutrition we can use or the waste the turbid the turbid qi refers to the waste the waste can be the solid waste also can be the water waste which can be the urine because of the small intestine the function of a small intestine is under the function of spleen and in our theories we actually more focus on the zhang organs that's why the disorder of small intestine such as diarrhea or ad abdominal pain these symptoms which are caused by the small intestine or even large intestine sometimes we will focus on the spleen that's because of our theories the function in the small intestine includes or the function in the small intestine is included in the function of spleen separating the clear and turbid it's actually separates that's in the same process of receiving and digesting food in the meantime the small intestine move the food and the water keep moving downwards to the large intestine and in the meantime it separates the clear the qi from the food and from the water that we need to absorb them and then the turbid that uh, the waste in terms of the, the solid waste become a stool also move to large intestine and also the water the watery waste in watery waste which is which is the urine with with uh, assistance with uh, by the kidney yang so the small intestine will absorb the the water waste and then the kidney yang can help the small intestine and then the waste the watery waste will transfer to the kidney and store in the blood become the urine so that's the water the urine metabolism under the function of the small intestine and kidney yang and blood So if the the function of the small intestine is ordered, if you call such as the food, the indigestive food, so in the stool, or in the especially in the stool, because the once the indigestive food goes to the large intestine, you become a stool. But if the function of receiving and digesting food doesn't function well so the small intestine cannot digest food well this condition will cause the undigested food in the stool so in this condition the patient will tell you that when they go to the toilet they can see that the food they eat the day before so in in this condition we also use the treatments to tonify the kidney the, the spleen function and for the other case is because of the the water the small intestine also in charge of the water metabolism so if the water doesn't doesn't go to the kidney and store in the blood the water stay in the small intestine and move to the large intestine in this case the patient will suffer from diarrhea that's why in this situation we can use the treatments to separate the water we are going to reduce the water from the large intestine or we or we're going to increase the water in the urine which in other way to move the water from the large intestine to the blood and then in this way we can heal the diarrhea so this is one kind of treatment for diarrhea 
based on the function of the small intestine. That's the disorder of the what the water metabolism. So in this case, we're going to increase the the urine. And the theory is behind this method is because of the small intestine receive and digest food and also can separate the clear and turbid qi, which is both of them are under the function of the spleen. Because when we introduce the spleen previously, because we have not mentioned the, the small intestine, that's why we didn't mention, we only mentioned the spleen. And then later on, we mentioned spleen and stomach. Now we mentioned small intestine. Actually, these the spleen function includes the whole digestive function. The large intestine. The large intestine is located in the abdomen, connected to the small intestine at the top and the anus at the bottom. So the large intestine connects with the small intestine, the food and the waste. Actually, the waste from the small intestine move downwards to the large intestine. And the large intestine connects with the lung. The main function of the large intestine receiving and convey, con conveying the waste materials sent down from the small intestine absorb its fluid content and forms the remainder into feces to be excreted. So this statement actually explains that the, the main function of the large intestine is to form the feces. Where does the, the materials come from? The materials is come from the small intestine and then um, he absorb the fluid so it make the the material material drier to have a solid species with the diarrhea so it means there's too much water in the large intestine if you have patient will have a loose stool or diarrhea these are the dysfunction of spleen because the spleen in charge of the transportation of water the water is supposed to go to other organs but the water stays in the large intestine so it causes the, the loose stool or diarrhea on the contrary if there's not enough water in the large intestine or the large intestine absorb excess water in the feces it will cause constipation then the stool could not move properly so in our treatments there's one kind of treatments we increasing the water or we increasing the body fluids in the large intestine so we think about this it's very similar a boat in a river but the the river there's no water in the river or not in, not enough water in the water in the river so the the boat could not be moved and then in this case we add the water we add more water in the river then the, the boats can be moved again so in this situation the feces is similar to the boat and then um, the fluids in the large intestine is similar to the, the water in the river. So we can increase the water in the large, intest large intestine to relieve the constipation. Large intestine also gov governing the body fluids. So in this it's actually very similar to the the receiving and absorb the fluid. 
So one is the solid materials sent sent down from the small intestine. One refers to the watery materials from the small intestine. Because of this function, that's why we said if there is not enough body fluids or water in the large intestine, patient will have constipation. This is because of the governing function of body fluids. So these two, the small intestine and large intestine, are quite close to related to the digestive function. The next organ we're going to is the, is the bladder. The bladder is located in the lower abdominal region. It connects, it is connected upwards to the kidney and downwards to the urinary tract. The meridian connects with the kidney. So these are the couple's organs. The function of blood, storing and discharging urine. So that's the main function of the blood, storing and discharging urine. And from here, we need to understand where does the urine come from. As we explained previously, in the small intestine and large intestine, especially especially for small intestine. The small intestine has has the function of separating the clear and turbid. The turbid, the liquid turbid qi, which refers to the urine, or refer to the materials to transform into urine. In this process, what's important there is the kidney yang function, the kidney function. The kidney function will process the the what the, the liquid fluid, the liquid materials, the liquid materials from the small intestine, which you consider as the waste, will be transformed into urine. And the clear, so the small intestine can separate the clear qi from the turbid qi, the clear qi. When it absorb, this qi will reuse, will be distributed to the other area, the other organs or tissues. Then this kind of body fluids will goes back to the the circulation of our body of of our body fluids. The second function of the bladder is discharging urine. The, the storing and discharging urine need to be balanced. The bladder needs to store, also need to discharge. And the function of discharging urine, which organs or which functions need to be there to assist. Mostly related to the kidney function, the kidney qi. Kidney qi should assist because the kidney and blood are coupled meridian, the, the coupled organs, and that's why the kidney can help the discharging of the urine. If the function of discharging urine doesn't function well, patient may have difficult urination or frequent urination. Also, sometimes you have like painful urination or even loss of the control of urination. So it depends on what kind of a condition. And these conditions, we're going to focus on the bladder and the kidney. So in the three months, we're going to focus on these two. When we study about the kidney 
in the zhang organs is as the, the the kidney as the function of storing axons and we also gave it you the example that the kidney corresponds to the winter and because the winter everything concentrates and stop and keep at the roots so this is very similar to the kidney function that's need to store as without discharging so here the bladder function to store the urine this function also rely on the kidney kidney chi the, the assistance from the kidney chi which is from the storing function of the kidney so the how bladder store the urine that's exactly why in our clinical practice if some patients suffer from frequent urination or in worse condition lost the control of u urination so these two the frequent urination and lost control of urination is actually similar the the cause behind these are actually similar only due to the how severe they are if not that bad is be considered as the it can be the frequency can be the frequent urine and then the if in a worst case it can be the loss control of urination so this kind of patients what are we going to treat we're going to treat the kidney we're going to improve the kidney function which can benefit the bladder can recover the function of the bladder which is storing the urine and the theories behind this kind of tumor is the blood the kidney has the function of storing essence so that's the function of the blood the next organ actually is the last Fu organ we're going to we are going to introduce is the san jiao. San jiao is one of the six fu organs, and san jiao can be divided into upper jiao, middle jiao, and lower jiao. The san jiao meridian connects with the pericardium. So as you can see here, we don't have the location of san jiao. The reason why we don't have location there is because san jiao it's not all there's some debates on where Sanjiao is from the previous introductions of Zhangfu theories until now we have introduced most of the Zhang and Fu organs you see we mentioned quite a few times of Sanjiao what exactly Sanjiao is the upper jiao, middle jiao the low jaw we're going to introduce two theories or two schools of san jiao. the first school they think that the san jiao is in our now body the up and it can divide into so this area considered as san jiao, the whole internal organs the whole body and then from the lung and heart, we divide one, make a line there, and from the the baby button, they make a line there. So they think this this area, the upper area, we consider as upper jaw. From the diaphragm to the baby button, approximately, this we consider the middle jaw and here we consider as the lower jaw so this school of the theories they separate the sanja they divide the sanja according to the location this theories this school can explain some of our treatments such as we says where's the lung and where's the heart we said the lung sits in the upper jaw the lung the lung also sits in the upper jaw and also exactly why we says compare the lung and the heart because they sit in upper jaw so 
compared with the upper and lower, upper is yang. So this area is yang area. And then when we compare with the heart and the, the lung, the heart is full of blood and keep beating. And the heart relate, corresponds to the summer, which is a fire. So the heart considered as yang. So we consider that the heart is the yang organs in yang. And then compared with the lung, compared with the lung and heart, the lung we consider as yin organs of the yang. Because these two are in upper jaw, which is in yang. But in this yang, we can divide yin and yang. This is the yin yang with yin yin yang. That's the fear with. Then as the, the liver and kidney, we also can have similar description. So this is one explanation of the, one application of the mid, upper, middle, and lower jaw. But this explanation could not explain all clinical phenomena. So there's another theory we, we, we are going to introduce. In order to introduce the other theories, we need to study the function first. The function of San Jiao governing the qi of the whole body, managing the whole body's overall qi movements and qi transformation, serving as the passenger of water circulations. It's actually the, the same the same meaning of the water, the water metabolism. So in from these two statements, we actually describe that the San Jiao is the pathways of the qi and water or qi and blood flow. Because we, we, we didn't mention the, the blood here. But why I said it also related to the blood because that's the, the qi. Where does the blood come from? Blood is the red part of the qi. So San Jiao is actually it's the pathway of the qi, blood, and water, and body fluid. The pathway. But then you need to think about that. Where do we have qi, blood, and body fluid in the body? The answer is that all over body, the, the body, the whole body, has qi blood and body fluids, right? That's the fat that's everywhere and anywhere we has the the qi, blood and body fluids. Then San Jiao is the pathway of these materials, these substances, which means San Jiao is actually all over the body. Wherever there is qi, blood and body fluids, there is San Jiao. Because in order to move the qi, blood, and body fluids, the qi and blood, body fluids, they need to move through San Jiao. Which, in other, in other words, which is, in other words, you can see that wherever there's qi, there's San Jiao. So that's another theory that the San Jiao can be anywhere. You see, these theories are actually quite interesting. San Jiao, these theories, we don't see the organs. We don't see specific organ called San Jiao, but we have this kind of theories. And now as the medical, the, as the modern medicine develops, the, the scientists, the Western medicine practitioners, they actually, the more they research, the more, they find something so close to the theories of Chinese medicine, such as San Jiao. If you search on the some articles, you will see in recent years there's a, a quite popular field research field that they some experts think that some experts believe that they found 
a new organs in the body. So uh, apart from your anatomy, let everyone admit that the, our physical body. But apart from there, we some experts claim that we have another new organs that we don't really know, and then these new organs they call it interstitium. So the interstitium, that's the, the new develop the, the new theories that say they believe that the this kind of stuff is similar to Sanjiang. This is not confirmed or not everyone admits such as the information we have introduced from our textbook. That's the common knowledge everyone admits. These are new debates. So for Sanjiao, we still have a long way to study, to research, to, to research. So in future, if you have the chance, you are if you are interested in these theories, you still have the chance to contrib contribute your your efforts in this theor theoretical development. What exactly Sanjiao is? Where is Sanjiao? What's the function of Sanjiao? So here we can we introduce. The, these two functions of Sanjiao. The two schools of Sanjiao and these two schools that once in the context class and were introduced to the students there. The one student asked very good questions. But to who which which school do you prefer? Or which school which school do you use in your practice? The answer is we use both. That's why we introduce both of these theories. You see our study from the bachelor degree to the master to the doctoral study in, in Chinese medicine and acupuncture. Our target is different. In bachelor degree study, we will tell you what it is. Everything we give you definition, we define is so it's very clear, Sanjiao is Sanjiao, the heart is in the heart. But when we study the master de degree in acupuncture, or the doctorate degree in, in acupuncture in, or in Chinese medicine, we have more confusion, we have more debates known that's what your efforts can contribute to the development of Chinese medicine. So these two schools you need to understand and we're also going to apply in our practice. The last aspect we're going to introduce in Sanjiao is these three locations. So we, we introduce the second school that's from the function where the qi, blood, and body fluid moves. That's for the first function, the first school, the upper, the middle, and the lower jaw from the location. There's one very important theory for this is in the treatments, especially in the wound disease or the epidemic diseases. In the etiology, we're going to introduce the pestilent qi, which is the epidemic diseases such as the COVID-19. This kind of diseases, they affect our human body. And then the treatment for diff different jiao, we will use different treatments. If the pathogen affects the upper jiao, affects the middle jiao, or affects the lower jiao, we use different kinds of herbs. The reason is the reason is because they are in different area, they have different characteristics. In Ling Su, which is the the second volume of Huang Di Neiji, it describes that the treatment towards upper jaw, we should use the herb, the herbs that's very light, similar to the feather. So you can see the, the feather, the feathers from the animal, how light they are. So the, the treatments from 
for these this area, especially for the lung, we will use very light herbs. The light herbs mostly are from the le leaves or the flowers. That's why we use a lot for for the upper jaw, for the middle jaw, for the middle jaw. Many refers you see in the I knew that the liver and the kidney also here, but for the middle jaw we many refers to the spleen and stomach, and these spleen and stomach are where the acquired qi and blood come from. So that's the source of our nutrition, where the acquired qi come from. And do you still remember? When I said the middle jaw, do you still remember where have I mentioned the middle jaw? Do you, st do you still remember that the formation of the blood? In Huang Di Nei Jin, how, how does it describe the formation of blood? I said that the middle jaw receive the food and water. Middle jaw receive the qi. And then the qi travels to the heart, the heart changes from the qi into red color, and then the red color materials, the red color substance, we call them blood. So where's the middle jaw, or where's the the qi from, from the middle jaw? That's from the spleen and stomach. So that's something we focus on the spleen and stomach, and middle jaw, it states in the in between of the upper and lower so it works it will look it works like the hinge the hinge of the door from outside and inside what does it do it move around so it move down and up so our treatments towards the, the middle jaw is actually mainly to recover the movements of the spleen and stomach function which is is actually the transportation and transformation function of spleen and stomach. In other words, also the ascending function and descending function. You see, when we use the coupled organs, the spleen governs the rise, controls the rise. That's why it says the spleen controls the, the rise, the rise qi, the rise of a clear, right? If you don't remember here, you can refer back to your previous notes. That's the spring governs the, the rise of, of clear. The stomach controls the descending. That's the characteristic of the stomach. So something moving up, something moving down. You still remember this, this picture, the yin and yang symbols. Once something move up, something move up, something move down, you can see these two fish, yin yang fish, then the circulation can move. That's why something sits in, in the middle, they should move from up, upper to lower. So that's the main function to, re to recover the movements of the middle jaw, of the spleen and stomach. When we talk about the lower jaw, the lower jaw refers to, in terms of the organs, refers to the, the liver, the kidney, and also the bladder, the uterus, sits at the, at the bottom. So these are in lower jaw. The lower jaw stays at the bottom of your, of your chunk. So in the two months, the herbal medicine also need to use the very heavy herbs. That's the that's why that's how they can go to the deep down. Of the of the body. This kind of theories, especially in the the location, according to the location, upper, middle and lower jaw, in our wound disease when we study in future from the differentiations, 
we use a lot this kinds of theories. That's because the pathogen from external pathogen from the environment, they can attack attack us from the upper jaw to the lung and then to the stomach and then transfer to the liver and kidney. So this kind of diseases it goes deeper and deeper according to the upper, middle and lower jaw. The, the situation of the patient becomes worse and worse. In other, in other conditions, the pathogen also can attack ourselves from the upper jaw or from the middle jaw directly or even from the lower jaw directly. So that's why we use, we need to understand both of these theories. In the function, we more focus on the qi and blood, also body fluids, the movement. But for the location, it's also very important to understand where they are, because for the differentiation, we're going to use a lot of these theories. And this theories, San Jiao differentiation method, it's not only based on here, but you can have a general idea. That's why I said the liver and kidney stays in the lower jaw. Although from here, from the location, it sits in the middle jaw, but in the theories, it stays in the lower jaw. That's also why we use different, we introduce different schools, because one school cannot explain everything. So until today, we have introduced all the zhang organs and fu organs. What's important here in your studies, you, we need to understand the name of the organs, which is the most fundamental. You need to know where, what, we are talk, what are we talking about. The second is you need to understand the function of these. And uh, you you need you can use the function this function to anal to analyze analyze the physiological ph phenomena. That's the purpose of the study. Such as we have introduced in the previous videos that the movement of of breathing, the formation of blood, the formation of urine, how. Do you analyze how do how do we understand the process, the functions of different organs towards these physiological phenomena? So that's what you need to study. You need to focus, you need to work on more. In the next video, we can, we are going to introduce the extraordinary organs. Thank you guys.